हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सविता शर्मा फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल हाई वैक्यूम प्रोडक्शन दैट इज यूजिंग मैकेनिकल पम्प्स फ्रॉम द पेपर थिन फिल्म साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल we are going to understand what is vacuum and how we can create the vacuum then we'll study in detail how the vacuum is created using pumps and then we will study in detail about mechanical pumps and their broad classification into positive displacement pumps and momentum transfer pumps the different types of pumps are which we are going to study in this module the first is the rotary pump which we will study in detail along with its basic working principle number 2 is the turbo molecular pump or the tmp pump the third is the roots pump and we are going to study the basic principle and working of all the above mentioned pumps so let us start with with the definition and the basic understanding of vacuum and how vacuum is created using pumps ideally a vacuum in some space which contains zero matter but in real life it is almost impossible to achieve the state of ideal vacuum so there is another definition of vacuum which can be stated as an environment where the gas or gas pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure alternatively an enclosed space where the density of air is less than at atmospheric pressure is called vacuum now to create vacuum we need pumps basically pump is defined as a device which suck out the matter from one space region and discharge to another space region with the help of creating gradient between the two regions mechanical pumps mechanical pumps are the most basic vacuum pumps which are being used in semiconductor industry research laboratories food industries etc some of the common examples of rotary wave pump turbo molecular pump etc mechanical pumps can be classified into two broad categories the first category is positive displacement pumps and the second category is momentum transfer pumps positive displacement pumps or in short we can call them as pdps meaning of positive displacement can be understood as when the pump piston or rotor moves it displaces the fluid or gas ahead of it as we know partial vacuum may be created by expanding the volume of container if in any chamber compartment of vacuum can be closed off subsequently exhausted and then expanded again and this cycle continues then we can evacuate the chamber indefinitely up to certain very less pressure without requiring infinite expansion of chamber volume this is the principle of positive displacement pumps very common example which uses this principle is manual water pump these pumps use fluid or gas pressure to transmit power these pumps have very close fittings among the components hence chances of occurring of leakages is very less 
Pressure relief valves is provided in these pumps because these pumps require protection against overpressure if the resistance to flow becomes very large. TDPs are found in variety of areas such as chemical processing, food cleaning industry, liquid delivery, biotechnology, etc. The popularity and versatility of the PDPs is due to their compact design, continuous flow, regardless of differential pressure, high viscosity performance, and ability to handle high differential pressure. Rotary pumps and root pumps are the basic examples of the PDPs or of these categories. The principle of basic displacement pumps is being shown in the given figure as what we discussed in the previous slide. It is showing the low pressure gas with a valve, then the seals, then there is a compressed gas after we apply the compression. So what all the principle we discussed in previous slide you can see in the given figure. The examples of the displacement type pumps which works on the same principle are rotary vein pump, scroll pump, etc. Momentum transfer pumps. In the momentum transfer pumps, gas molecules to be evacuated from the chamber is accelerated out to the exhaust side which is usually backed by positive displacement pump to maintain the operating base pressure of the order of 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 tor for high vacuum pump. Based on the laws of dynamics, matter flows differentially at different pressures. For atmospheric pressure to the mild vacuum, interaction of molecules among themselves dominates and they push neighboring molecules known as viscous flow. If the pressure is below the mild vacuum, the distance between the molecule increases and molecule then interact with the chamber more often than among themselves which results in more effective molecular pumping than the positive displacement pumping. The two main example of momentum transfer pump are diffusion pump and turbo molecular pump. The main difference between these two pumps are that in diffusion pump gas molecules are blown out using jets of oils moving in ultrasonic speeds inside the main body of pump while in turbomolecular or TMP pumps they uses high speed fans to evacuate the chambers and there is no involvement of any kind of oil. Principle of momentum transfer type pump is shown in the given figure. The examples of displacement type pumps which work on the same principle diffusion pump and the turbomolecular pump etc. So the examples of displacement type pumps are diffusion pump and the turbomolecular pump. But the pressure of the taken volume of gas becomes slightly higher than the atmospheric pressure and then discharge it to the atmosphere. Rotary pump evacuate the chamber from 760 tor to 1 into 10 raised per minus 4 tor. Typical internal parts of rotary pump are shown in the given figure which is in the coming slides. Chamber in which vacuum is to be done is connected to the inlet part. Once the rotary pump is connected to the chamber, 
and vein starts rotating and eventually it entraps large volume of gas molecules which are present inside the chamber and as the vein moves further gas expands in crescent shaped volume and as the vein rotates further it compresses the entrapped gas below the exhaust valve until the pressure of the entrapped gas molecules exceeds the atmospheric pressure eventually the pressure exceeds atmospheric pressure and gas molecules are then expelled to the atmosphere the minimum pressure limit is determined by the leakage of the gas around the seals used in the various parts of rotary pump for a single stage rotary pump it is around 50 ml and for the two stage rotary pump it is 0.1 ml in two stage rotary vane pumps vent of the first stage is connected to the inlet port of second stage adding more stages in this series of two stage has no practical benefits rotary pumps have a problem in working if there are condensable vapors present in the chamber one of the most common vapor of this kind is water vapor as the water vapors inside the chamber will be compressed inside the rotary pump it will condense into liquid prior to the opening of the exhaust valve this liquid dilutes the oil and further it will corrode the pump in order to prevent this condensation problem a gas ballast is provided with the pump the gas blast valve will introduce small amount of dry gas in the region where compression takes place this introduction of dry gas will reduce the amount of compression that a condensable vapor undergoes and hence reduces the condensation problem the oil that surrounds the stator serve as lubricant of moving part and also it seals the outlet valves from any leaks rotary pump oils must have low vapor pressure still be viscous enough to seal across the veins of pump it is also important to check oil level time to time and oil level always be maintained at the proper level the figure given here shows the details of the rotary pump we can see the inlet of the pump we can see the vein that rotates we can see the oil which is leveled at a particular position and there is a crescent shaped volume rotor and stator can be seen and there is a exhaust valve and exhaust outlet turbo molecular pump or in short tmp turbo molecular pumps are the extended version of one of the earlier high vacuum pump known as molecular drag pump the basic cross sectional view of molecular drag pump is shown in the figure given here we can see that a spiral channel is machined into the stator and a flared disc as a rotor these molecular drag pumps reported to be designed in early 1900s but having very low pumping speed and misaligned bearing designs were also existed which limited its practical applicability for realizing and maintaining high vacuum to overcome these issues there were changes in design and this is called as modern molecular drag pump in the construction part 
very high strength aluminium alloy is used for making rotor and the shape is kept to be like inverted cup inside and outside surface of the rotor is machined to create spiral grooves which are aligned with the stator in a specific pattern to give the pump action both the surfaces inside and outside of the rotor creates elongated pumping path the shape size and tolerances of the machined grooves changes from the inlet part to the exhaust part in order to allow for multiple compression stages to provide cooling to the pump flush gas is used intentionally flush gas is also used for exhausting the compressed gas inside the pump in general molecular drag pumps have the compression ratio of 10 to the power 9 is to 1 for nitrogen pumping action of the molecular drag pump is dependent upon the time which gas molecules stay at rotor and stator and also on the velocity with which gas molecules hit the blades of a rotor so higher the molecular weight of gas to be pumped lesser is the pumping speed nowadays there is another change in design that the arrangement of the rotor and stator is arranged like a turbine so now this pump is called as turbo molecular pump or tmp outside view of the pump and the internal parts of the pump are shown in the figure given here we can see the internal parts showing the inlet flange shaft upper bearing motor exhaust and lower bearing then we can see the stator and rotor we can see the cooling water and the moving blades turbo molecular pumps cannot compress the air directly into the atmosphere so these pumps always require a backing pump attached with exhaust of the turbo molecular pump to accomplish the final stage of compression critical backing pressure for turbo turbo molecular pumps is 10 to 40 torr which allows these tmps to be backed by rotary pump chambers pumped by these tmps may achieve base pressure of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 torr the next category or the next type of pumps which we are going to study are the roots pump roots pump are one of the examples of mechanical vacuum pumps which do not have any oil or lubricating fluid internal diagram of typical roots pump with four stages required for creation of vacuum is shown below in the figure roots pump consists of two double lobe impellers which are shown in black dumbbell shape which rotates in opposite directions with the pump housing in the figure given below upper down faced arrow shows gas inlet connected from chamber and lower down faced arrow is the outlet of roots pump position of the rotors in situation 1 and 2 is such that the volume intake increases from 
वन टू टू एज बोथ द रोटर्स मूव फर्दर सम पार्ट ऑफ द वॉल्यूम इज नाउ कट ऑफ फ्रॉम द इनलेट साइड कैन बी सीन इन सिचुएशन थ्री इन सिचुएशन फोर दिस मच वॉल्यूम इज ओपन अप टू द एग्जॉस्ट साइड नाउ गैस अंडर फोर वैक्यूम प्रेशर which is higher than the intake pressure flows in this inside flown gas compresses the gas coming from the inlet side as the impellers rotates further this volume of compressed gas is ejected at the exhaust part this process is repeated twice in one full rotation of both the impellers sometimes three lobe or four lobe rotors are used for higher pressure duty as shown in figure both the impellers are exactly identical they are dimensioned and arranged in such a manner that when they rotates large enough part of the first impeller is a close fit to the surface of the second impeller the two impellers are dimensioned to be in close fit with pump housing also when these two impeller rotates they really never touches each other at any point of time and also they do not touch housing of the pump at any point of time in both the cases impellers with housing or within impellers there is a clearance of 0.05 mm to 0.25 mm since the isolation from inlet port to the outlet port is very narrow there is back flow of gas which is being pumped from exhaust region to the inlet region so efficiency of compression is lesser as compared to oil sealed vacuum pumps as far as pumping speed is concerned there is an extra advantage in roots pump owing to the zero rubbing contact due to zero friction which results from contacts impellers can rotate in very fast speed that is from 1000 to 4000 rpm which results in much higher pumping speed the efficiency of pump occurs when pump is operated at pressure of 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 torr with compression ratio of 10 so these root pumps require a backing pump like rotary pump for better efficiency and pumping speed operating pressure range of single stage roots pump is 10 to 10 to the power minus 5 millibar total pressure and it is very much sensitive to the four pressure three and four stage roots pump can lower down the pressure up to 10 to the power minus 6 torr so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module first of all we have seen a basic introduction of what is a vacuum and what are the ways of creating a vacuum then we saw that we need pumps for creating vacuum and so we studied about the mechanical pumps and their broad classification into positive displacement and momentum transfer pumps then we studied in details about the different types of pumps like first of all we studied about the rotary pump then secondly about the turbo molecular pump then the lastly we studied about the roots pump we read 
and we learned about the basic principle and working of the above three pumps. Thank you.